Okay, we've gone through two different scenes so far. Pretty quick scenes, uh, very simple applications, but I think fairly dynamic results. On this one right here, I definitely should have heat set this one. My um, uh, VersaBind Claire is really bleeding now. Uh, after an hour, I could see it starting to go, and after two hours, it's real blobby looking. I think it still looks okay, but those trees have definitely lost their um, definition. So, if you use kind of a regular pigment ink on there, heat set it. Or, you know, just go with the brilliance, and I think you'd be fine. It just It's just a faster drying um, style of pigment ink. All right, but that being said, let's get on to photo stamping here, okay? Now what I did was I sent out some um, different photographic uh, prints here. These are just four by six uh, style prints of clouds. You can find these on my Flickr account um, for free download and print out if you want. But, you know, these days you can just look up clouds on the internet and, you know, you'll probably find, I don't know, just, you know, thousands of uh, downloadable files. On mine, what I did, though, because... Um, sometimes having something with too high of a contrast, like this um, uh, cloud next to the uh, dark blue sky like that, I can stamp out, you know, my imagery down here in this area, but um, it makes it a little bit less universal having that kind of high contrast in there. So what I did on my Flickr um, account files, not all of them don't download the whole thing because I have some time lapses in there and things like that too. But what I did was I decreased the contrast between, you know, the contrast is the, you know, the, uh, the range in between the lightest lights and the darkest of darks. So I kind of make it a little bit more narrow. From a photographic standpoint, it makes it less interesting. But from a photo stamping perspective, it makes it more universal. Uh, universally uh, applicable to um, different types of compositions and imagery used in it. Like this one right here, there's a lot of contrast through here. This one would be good for, you know, some solid types of imagery, you know, like, you know, dark trees, pine trees, and whatnot, okay? Um, but something like this would be a little bit more universal. There's not, like, kind of a really deep... Um, real contrasty area in here. All right, so that being said, um, I sent this group out some, um, you know, just a variety of them. I didn't have eight of the same ones, so I just sent them out some general things. So you have to kind of look at this, okay, and figure out, okay, if, you know, I mean, it depends on what you're going to use in here. If I just stamp out a row of trees and the base right down here, you can do it any which way you want, you know. There's uh, anything you can do, all right? But if you're going to work it around um, kind of an imagery like this, then you just have to decide. And there's many ways to do it. I mean, I can stamp this low down here, and then you'll have all this sky up here. But, you know, all these photographs are going to be unique. So you just kind of have to figure out where you want it to go, okay? There's not really a right or wrong with some uh, photographs plus images. There might just be kind of a way that's a little bit more suitable for it. Um, you know, like what I said, you know, kind of working around the higher contrasted areas. All right, so with these types of clouds, I mean, there was a certain configuration, but when I'm looking at something like this, I'm not sure if I could tell which way's up and which way's down, but that's good because we can use it in a very universal, uh, universally applicable manner, meaning it can be used this way, this way, this way, or this way, right? Okay. If you snip it this way, it's going to be darker down here because it's inherently darker in the photograph. All right, enough of that. I think you get the gist of what I'm talking about there. Um, let's grab our imagery here, okay. Now, whether we're stamping on a white piece of paper or a photograph like this, you know, uh, standard compositional types of aspects apply. Now, we're going to use dye-based inks on this, okay? Don't use the, brilliant, uh, the pigment inks on this type of paper. Um, pigment inks are not going to dry on this. The brilliance might, I guess it would, okay? But that being said, if this dried on here, what we're going to do is we're going to enhance our photographs a little bit with some alcohol pens. Alcohol would make 
an oil-based medium bleed. It would make it go back into solution. Does that make sense? But alcohol on water don't mix, so it's not going to smear and blur my water-based impressions, okay? Now, I mean, that being said, if I do this right away, if I just stamp this out and it's still a little bit wet, and I go in and start coloring, it might bleed a little bit because there might be some of this um, dye-based ink residue on the surface like that, okay? But a pigment ink, you know, if you stamped it on here, is going to have a lot of residue on the surface of that pigment sitting on the surface because it's not going to be soaking into the page. All right. Now, if all you want to do is just stamp some imagery and don't color anything, you're just going to leave it as is, then the brilliance will probably be fine for that. But let's go into some different effects with this, okay? I was thinking about this, um, this series of videos. I thought maybe I should have stamped out the exact same composition on each one so that we can do a comparison contrast between photo stamping, foil, you know, glossy, matte paper, whatnot. Uh, but I don't know. I get kind of bored of doing the exact same thing, so I like kind of mixing it up. Let's go, let's go with that one kind of out to the side a little bit, kind of that three-quarter um, type of composition. Okay. This is going to look really weird, just one impression sitting by itself, too, okay? We're going to anchor all these images after we stamp them out, too. I might need to wait for it to dry a little bit, but look at that beautiful impression like that. And dye-based inks are not going to run on this paper, but remember how I wipe this off? You see where that kind of applies down here? It just has this beautiful transition right off the edge like that. See how the, my reflections down here get a little bit lighter because of that little wipe off right there? So you're using the same kind of principles, okay, and uh, methodology as, you know, that first lesson with the, di uh, with the uh, st uh, stamp sketches, sorry, uh, on matte, you know, matte paper. All right. Now, you know how I'm always, you know, on these scenes I've been using black ink to stamp things out in? I mean, you could if you had pens or something like that. You could color in green or something like that on there. I usually go with black first and then put little green highlights and then stamp it out and I get green trees. So you can do that. But um, let's just stick to some just very <laughs> basic, simple applications of all these um, images right here. Okay. Photo paper gives, you know, some of the most beautiful impressions. It kind of I don't know, the emulsion coating on this photo paper really grabs that ink really fast. And it just kind of soaks it in a little bit. So you get really crisp impressions. Oops. I think I might have stamped it and moved it a little bit. I hope I didn't blur it. Or if I did, not too much. Oh, okay. It doesn't look bad. Now, doing nothing on these. I mean, it looks pretty cool already, doesn't it? It looks like that. Uh, the clouds are kind of, uh, you know, the sky are reflecting in the water like that, doesn't it? But see, we can give it a little bit more mass and uh, volume and opacity, meaning, you know, all those clouds and everything are just showing right through those rocks right down there. So we'll color those in a little bit, add a little bit of shadows down at the base here, and just give the imagery a little bit more visual weight, okay? When we get to that. These are really fun too. Um, now as far as photographs, you can print these out at home on photo paper. Probably a lot of you have, you know, photo paper sitting in your whatever, your supply cabinet from years ago when, you know, every printer used to come with, you know, a free pack of, you know, Kodak or Epson or whatever paper, you know, photo paper. I don't know, we were, we're we were doing a lot more printing out of image, you know, of uh, photos back when, right? Back when digital photography caught fire and was going like gangbusters. I have, I don't know, we have some 11 by 17 even uh, that I never used. So you just kind of, we hoarded, uh, we hoarded paper. <laughs> Back in the day, I have 4 by 6 size ones, everything. 
Look how crisp that uh, those water lilies are down there. The water grass. Okay. Now remember, there's a lot more kind of fuller applications, uh, you know, that we can do with um, photo stamping. And if you look at uh, uh, online, if you just type in stampscapes and photo stamping, um, I might even have a playlist. I'm not sure for photo stamping, but um, uh, you know, you'll come up with some different um, lessons that I've done. And typically, I just use a little bit more. Um, you know, alcohol ink on these, then I'll do on this one. I just want this, all of these ones in this mini workshop to be, um, you know, pretty quick because we have a lot to cover here. All right, so standard uh, impression quality type of things down here. You know, we have a reeds, a little bit of an opening right here. You don't always have to do that. You can have reeds going across this front. They kind of, you know, change the angle, you know, from one impression to the next, change the height of it, you know, like that, going across in there. And it just gives your scene a lot more variation and visual richness when things don't look so static, okay? It's one of the things I really work on a lot with my designs. I want my designs to look, to stand out on their own, but then when used in repetition, don't look like the same image over and over again, okay? And that's one of the biggest um, types of uh, uh, considerations that I put into my own designs. And there's certain types of uh, little secrets that I do for that and how to create that different type of look. When things look th too similar, I call that kind of like a picket fence type of thing, you know, where it's this, the same thing over and over and over again. And it creates this kind of clutter within your, um, I don't know, visuals, if not your subconscious too, when you're looking at it over and over again. You want things looking similar so that it creates um, um, continuity between one thing and the next, but you also want variations so that, you know, new two things are ever the same. All right, so here's that thing um, that I did here. I really wiped off some of those birds on here with my paper towel. Everything was just stamped and uh, colored in black, but I wiped some off, but don't wipe off all the ink. Well, you could if you want to, you know, a smaller number of them, but look at this. Doesn't that create a little bit of depth within those birds? The ones that, that are lighter look farther off in the distance. So what we've done is we've taken a two-dimensional, everything's two-dimensional as it is, but we've taken something that would have been flat with all the birds the same size, and we've you know, pushed some back into the distance with the use of value, okay? So just little things like that. I mean, I could do a big migration and kind of have another one in the background with a second impression, you know, that value or dryness too. But let's not do that. I think that's enough birds right there. And oh, why not? Let's go for this little canoeist in here, or, or, you know, use the loon or something like that down here. Let's go ahead and use the loon. I want to use the loon. Those aren't, probably not loons up there flying, but, um, I don't know. We'll create this kind of, I don't know, it's like a bird, uh, whatever. Hangout location, sanctuary, whatever. Okay, down here in the water, I think what I'll do because we're getting into, what is this, the third piece? Well, we did all those stamp sketches too. But see, I'm kind of wiping off that little reflection down there so that I get some variation in the reflection down here. So we'll have a darker head up here, but is this little loon's uh, reflection down there will be a little bit lighter. So we get um, a little bit more richness in the impression itself, just like we did in those birds up there. So even if it's a little person or something like that, you can wipe off some of the ink to do that, okay? So see that little area down there? I probably could have wiped off a little bit more, but it's a little bit lighter like that, okay? All right. Now, it would be my <laughs> preference. Is my heat gun plugged in here? Yeah. I should probably heat dry this a little bit. Okay, let's not do it, though. Let me just see if I can go on here and just start coloring in some of these areas a little bit, okay? 
Okay, coloring fundamentals when it comes to volumes, okay? Uh, let me just grab my larger version of these rocks right here, or the Lakeside Cove. But see these rocks right in here? Do you see how some of the rocks are lighter on the top and darker on the bottom? That represents top lighting or illumination, okay? All these rocks in here have two different tones. Well, I don't know. They, they have gradations going from light to dark, okay? So when I start coloring my rocks on here, I'm going to follow that, um, that toning convention, okay? What colors are we going to do? Let's just keep it basic. Let's go with... Um, now, these are alcohol inks right here. Let's go with some grays and some blue tones, okay? I'm going with, oh, uh, well, here, let's throw in a green, too, okay? Let's go with just something like this. Now, I mean, if you have one pen or, you know, something like that, you can use that, too. Um, but these are the ones I'll go. I want to kind of match the color, too. Doesn't that kind of look like that tone of blue right there? Here's a gray. Yeah, it's a little bit dark. There's a little bit of green. Okay. I like going with um, kind of lighter tones when I'm coloring. Okay, this one's... Uh, that doesn't really match that too much. But, you know, we can use it. Because we can always blend, right? With alcohol pens. Okay, so let's go back to our um, lighting convention. All right. Let's start off with just a really light gray like this, okay? So, just... You're going to be barely see what I'm doing here, okay? Because this is a very light gray, okay? But what I'm doing is I'm just coloring the base of these rocks, the darker region of them, which is the, the bottom of them, okay? Like that. But leave the tops of the rocks a little bit lighter, you know, for the most part. It's not as if I'm going to put a little bit of this ink on the top of the rock and say, Oh my god, I've ruined the piece, or something like that. Okay, I'm putting some of this in the shadow areas. Okay, like so. And that's it. With that gray, okay? Now, it's not smearing my water-based inks right there, because... Um, alcohol is not going to dissolve water, okay? But now it will blend um, with the previous alcohol ink that I've laid down, which is a good thing because I want them to blend together. Yeah, that might be a little bit too dark, but let's just use it a little bit sparingly, okay? See, where are we putting this? I'm just putting it in the same area, areas that I just did with my previous blue, okay? Kind of blending it in a little bit. It's doing that little alcohol thing where it's kind of, you know, blending and it almost looks like it's melting. You know, it's just kind of going back into solution when you hit it with another um, alcohol or something like a blending pen. All right. All right. So that's it right there. I'm just kind of going along my base of the rocks, but see, I'm leaving the tops of the rocks light. If we color too much of a rock, then you're just going to take your blending pen and almost like an eraser, you're just going to erase it, you know. Doesn't matter what brand you're using, but I would just typically say kind of go with your lighter versions. Don't go with like pine green for, you know, a really subtle application of green, okay. Just putting some of this green on these rocks, maybe it's a slight change in hue. It's nothing really big or drastic because... That's the color of it. Now, as I go like that, I can see a little bit of um, gray or black coming off of it. And that is probably some of the, you know, the ink from these freshly stamped images coming off a little bit. But it's not, you know, too much. It's not obtrusive, okay? There's my green. Uh, let's try this. I don't know. What color is this? It's like a... It's kind of like a sky blue. I'm putting it on some of my rocks down here. I'll put some of it in my water. If it gets a little bit too harsh down here, we can take a blending pen and kind of blend that in, okay? So don't worry about it if it gets a little bit too harsh in some areas, okay? 
getting this down here. This is my darker gray. See what I'm doing is I'm kind of going like this. This is kind of the marks I'm laying down, okay? Like that. I'm never going like this, okay? It's just little scumbling marks like this. I'm kind of adding it on like a rock or two. Adding it to the base of the rocks. It gives it mass and it makes it look like it's sitting in the water rather than having, you know, all the light just shining right through it like a, like a window. All right, uh, I don't need to use that one. Okay, here's my blender pen. Now, if you don't have a blender pen, you can just go back to your very lightest of color, like this super light blue right here. It's practically white or clear. It's not dry either, it's just super light. Okay, but here's my blender pen. And that my blender pen down here, I'll just kind of go back in here, and this kind of just blends in that base area. Okay, where I've laid down some of those inks in the water, and I'm, you can kind of, you know, I can add this onto the, my tops of my rocks like this. This almost acts like a little eraser too, if I put a little bit too much. I just go like this, and then having that ink, or this um, just alcohol probably, without any pigment in it, like that, that's kind of wiping off and removing some of the ink off the top. So you can go kind of light, medium, darker, and then go back in with your blender, or your lighter one, into those lightest areas, and it'll kind of blend in or out the tones that you've laid over the top of it. So it kind of completes the cycle. It's like this circular type of thing. And you can always just keep refining, you know, if you want to. But this blender pen, see, I can just go right over the top here, and, you know, it's not smearing my water-based media, okay? Oh. Here's our little loon down here. I didn't consider that uh, loon, but I can add a little bit of a you know, shadow down here around it, too. Let's go with a little bit more gray. It doesn't even show up sometimes, so you have to go to a darker color, but I start off with a lighter one to begin with. Okay. See, you know, I'm going back with a darker one again. Keep it a kind of a circular process. It doesn't have to be just... You know, add this, 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 and this, you know, and as soon as you add a certain color, there's no returning. You just kind of go back in and add a little bit more if need be. I love alcohol markers on um, pieces because I love texture, and I love getting that texture. Some people want alcohol markers. I don't want to see any texture at all. Hey, you know, texture's part of the visual arts, and it's a super important part of it. But see, down here in my rocks... Like that, it gives it kind of a little bit more character. You can't see too much. I mean, you can play around with things, too. Like, say, oh, let's, here, let's add a little bit more character to it. Let's go with this kind of brighter green like this, okay? But see, over the top of that, it's not a huge change, but it's kind of like adding, like, a little, I don't know, moss or something to it. Okay? So what I've done is I've changed or expanded my range of hue in here, okay? See that like that? I mean, you can put a little bit of that green in the water as it's reflecting the sky or something like that, or if you want to, you can, you know, you can go in and add a little bit of pink to your sky, you know, a little bit of color or whatnot. We're going to do something later on, too. We're going to add kind of a foggy mist to this. And I think that's the really great finishing touch on photo stamping. But, I don't know. I mean, I've been pulling around here and showing you different things. But by and large, this probably would have been, I don't know, 10 minutes or, well, maybe not 10 minutes, maybe 15 minute card. But pretty effective and always interesting because it's always going to be different depending on what photograph you've used. Some people take like a, a photograph of a sunset sky. So you have all these gradations of, reds, you know, um, oranges, yellows, or something like that. You can take it of the horizon, or just take it all of the sky, and you can imagine this scene right here, stamped over the top of, you know, gradations of, you know, your sunset or sunrise type of scenario. A uh, twilight would be fantastic. A mackerel sky. Um, a moon. You can take a photo of a moon, or something like that, and then stamp this scene underneath it.
There's all kinds of different possibilities, okay? And it's not always skies. I've seen people take photographs of, like, a, a mountain in the background and a meadow or something like that. And they would stamp maybe these, some of these trees in the foreground. Maybe stamp a deer or something like that in the meadow or something of that sort. All right, so here's some different looks so far. We have three very quick scenes, okay? And we still have all of our you know, stamp sketches that we can play around with, too. So we'll get to that pretty soon. But so far, so good, with three different variations and three different, very different looks, okay?